So welcome everyone to another ALD info session. I'm glad to have you here. My name is Eileen Merberg and I'm the executive director of Alpha Lambda Delta. We're headquartered in the Rochester, New York area uh, where I am now. And in about an hour, we're supposed to get a huge snowstorm that's going to bury us overnight. So uh, when we're done here, I'm going to run to the grocery store and stock up. Uh, so, and co-facilitating, you guys don't care about that. Uh, co-facilitating with me is one of our student leaders involved and uh, student ambassador. And I'll have Derek introduce himself. Hello everyone, my name is Derek. I'm one of the student ambassadors for ALD and I'll be helping with today's info session. And uh, I'm a junior in college. Where, even though it's behind you and you have a banner, where are you? I am at the University of Oklahoma, OU. Great, okay. Uh, great, so um, we are just going to uh, share some basic info about Alpha Lambda Delta, answer any questions you have. Um, but one of the first things um, is what we're doing now with this week's info sessions is we're offering prizes. So what we're gonna do is we do some random drawings um, uh, for gift cards. We're doing Amazon gift cards. And so what we're asking, if you wanna enter uh, to win a gift card, um, if you could put the what school you are representing, what, what school you go to in chat. So um, I'll see your names and I can find your names in the invitation. Obviously you are here because you got invited to join. So we already have you in our records as an invitee. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and put in chat what schools you're from, uh, and then we'll do some random drawings for uh, two or three gift cards. Um, starting uh, to either later tonight or tomorrow, I'll, we'll pick names. So that's how we're doing the drawing. Um, and uh, bonus points, if you engage more with us, we'll see if you have questions, um, but we're gonna try and answer um, most of your questions. All right, thanks everybody, that's good. A lot of Alabama, Maryland. Yep, those are two huge uh, invitation groups. Um, Alabama, Huntsville, Ohio, great. All right, lots of Maryland, good. Uh, okay, so, um, Basically, uh, we just, like I said, want to give you an overview. So uh, I'm not going to get into too much of our mission, but we are a National Honor Society. Um, our niche is first year students and um, that our mission is really just all about supporting your academic achievement, recognizing it. First of all, you're all here because you um, were invited because you were eligible. Uh, and um, so congrats on that. And our mission really uh, is to just promote academic excellence and help you continue uh, and hopefully even graduate um, with a really strong cumulative grade point average. Uh, I'll talk in a minute about how you're not required to uh, maintain this uh, GPA, but you're gonna certainly be encouraged to and um, supported uh, too. So we've been around a long time, uh, almost a hundred years. Next year is our centennial. We're pretty excited about that. Um, we were uh, founded in Illinois, but we're pretty much all over the country in almost every state. Uh, and um, about 20,000 students join every year. And Derek and I are gonna talk in a minute about legitimacy and scam organizations and sketchy organizations and how this might've seemed like one to you when you first got invited. It is very much not a scam. Um, and we are certified by the um, Association of College Honor Societies. It's the only certifying agency in the country. We've been a member since 1938, I think, like a long time we've been meeting standards. We'll um, talk a little bit about that again. Um, like I said, you're, you're eligible. You're, you're um, you know, certainly uh, met the criteria because you're invited and that criteria was three, five or higher your first semester at your university. So invitations tend to um, generally come in the spring semester after one semester of um, school. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the fees, but let me just at least plant the seed because that's always a question is like, why do I have to pay? What's the money go for? Is it worth it? We get it. Um, but just know, that I'm trying to understand that the fees, first of all, are different for every school, every chapter. And that's because our fee is 30 dollars, which is the national fee. But every school, every chapter, every university um, can add on above that 30 with money that they keep on campus. So that's an extra fee added to the 30 
that you would keep on campus that student leaders like Derek and, and you would have a say in how that's spent, but that's all money that goes to the campus. So for some of you, maybe you were told the fee was 40, 45, or 50, 55, 60, it could be anything. Um, just know that it's uh, 30 plus a local, what we call local fee or chapter fee. We'll talk more about money in a minute. Um, but that is it. Uh, we are very much, very strong in our stance that there are, are no other charges. There's no hidden fees, there's no extra fees, there's no annual fee. Nothing ever should be charged for you um, again after the initial membership fee. That's not always the case with other honor organizations or membership organizations that are often annual fees, but not ALD. Um, so lots of benefits. We're gonna talk a little bit more about them and I'll let Derek uh, talk because you don't wanna hear from me. Um, but uh, certainly as a student, he's benefited and, and can speak to that. Um, but certainly uh, lots of great benefits overall, both nationally from us, from the headquarters and at the local chapter level. At a minimum, you do get a certificate and pin. That's with no involvement. You don't have to be involved, um, but uh, that's just a little um, representation of a certificate and a little insignia pin that you get. Um, Derek, you want to talk a little bit about induction ceremonies? I can't remember if you have before. Does Oklahoma do an in-person ceremony? Uh, yes, we have uh, done in-person ceremonies, and uh, we had one just a few months ago, and uh, they're very uh, nice, kind of simple, but um, nice looking as well. Um, you get to get, uh, dress up a little bit, which is fun. And uh, it's a good little ceremony where you get to talk with a lot of people who are going to be joining you and you get to make some friends that you'll see in ALD over the years. Right. You don't have to go to it. It's not required that you go to be a member, like let's say the date doesn't work for you or you're, you're working or whatever. Um, but they're nice ceremonies they're one, once a year. So it's it's a typical event for an honor society for, for you to be inducted into it. So it's nice if you can go, if you do join. Um, and I asked about in-person versus online. Obviously we've done a lot of online ceremonies um, in the past couple of years and we're continuing those just because some chapters like it. Um, but I think Maryland's, and who else is here? Um, I, Maryland's is for sure in-person, Alabama's in-person, Ohio's in-person. So I think all your um, Texas State in person. So I don't think you have online ceremonies, but anyway, um, if you do join and you can go, I encourage you to go. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into what we see are the commonly asked questions or the common myths, and um, I'll ask uh, Derek to chime in. But the first is that some people don't really even think it is a big deal uh, to have a high, high GPA or to, you know, what's the point? Why, why do I care? Why should I um, do anything about that. And um, we do feel like it is a big deal. Like it's it's not easy to get a three, five or higher your first semester. There's typically and historically and research shows that it's not easy for first year students to necessarily excel right away. So again, at its most basic form of an honor society, it's recognition for that, celebration for that. Um, and uh, uh, there's so much more you can get out of it, but we do think it is, it's really our founding principle is recognizing and embracing it. Um, Derek, anything you wanna say about that one, that first one? Was it a big deal to you? <laughs> it was uh, certainly a big deal in the sense of uh, difficulty. It was a very major adjustment for me in terms of lifestyle and uh, yeah, it was a uh, accomplishment that I'm proud of. Yeah, awesome, that's great, yeah. So a very big uh, common question we get is, well, do I have to maintain that? Like, do I get kicked out? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, you do not get kicked out. So uh, everybody's GPA, GPA can really fluctuate. Um, great if you can maintain the minimum uh, standard um, throughout graduate uh, through graduation, um, but you uh, don't have like a, you don't lose membership once you join. Your only opportunity to join ALD is this semester because it's based on fall grades. Um, and so in this spring or next year, you dip below 3.2, 3, 3.4, or whatever, you have a tough semester, a tough year. Uh, that's okay. Uh, you're certainly going to get a lot of support from ALD to help maintain good grades, but you don't lose your membership if it dips below um, whatever it is now or whatever is uh, minimum. So you're, you're good there. A huge question we I get probably more than any. Well, the, the fee is the question and the time. So time commitment. 
a lot of students just say, you know, I've got so much on my plate, you're busy, you're high achieving, so you're already spending a lot of time studying. You might work, you might volunteer, you've got other things going on, family, church, a million things, right? And so you sort of think about joining something like this that is gonna take up a lot of time. So the bottom line is there are no time requirements. Um, again, you're gonna be encouraged to participate. There are going to be things going on on campus. I know that the chapters here today uh, are, are do a lot on campus. They're really active and, and um, big chapters on, on your campuses, but you don't have to go to any events or meetings if you don't want to. Um, so again, encouraged, there will be things happening, not required. Derek, you wanna say something about time? Yeah, it's, it's really up to each individual person. Uh, if you only want to go to an event every once in a while, it's totally okay. Or if you wanna go all in and go to everything, that's cool too. Yeah, and um, events really will vary. Some do, you know, events once or twice a week and some do them once a month and, you know, it's really gonna vary. And what does that mean? Well, there might be an event um, that is all about how to win a scholarship, that like that might be a workshop you wanna go to on a Tuesday night at seven o'clock in the student union. Your chapter might offer something like, hey, let's come together and talk about how we find out where all the scholarships are, uh, bring someone in to talk about how to write a good essay for a scholarship question, how to ask for a good letter of reference, uh, how to find out where the scholarships are that I might be eligible for. That might be a program you really want to go to. You don't want to go to anything else, but you want to go to that scholarship program. Or maybe there's something on service that really speaks to your heart and it's something that has to do with homeless or um, soup kitchens or nursing homes or something. You might want to go to that. You just never know. There's all sorts of things that are going to go on on your campus related to Alpha Lambda Delta that you might pick and choose from. And last thing I'll say about time commitment is that your time is really going to change. Like right now, right in this moment today, you might feel like you have a lot on your plate and you probably do and you've got a lot going on and you don't have time. But that's going to change for you. You're in your second semester. Um, things could change. This summer might open up. Next year, maybe your coursework is going to get a little easier for you because you're already um, doing well and you're learning how to learn. And so your schedule could really change for you. And so you never know what your time commitments might be down the road. And remember that membership is for life. So a year from now, two years from now, you might wish you were part of it because you want to go to an event um, because you have more time later. So time changes. Okay, let's talk about money. Um, why do I have to pay a fee? What's the fee all about? Um, Derek, I'm gonna turn this one over to you to handle if that's okay. And then I'll chime in and embellish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so in my two years as a member of ALD, um, I think I've definitely got my money's worth from that membership fee um, and then some like way beyond. Uh, part of it is that uh, you can sort of earn back that fee um, and more if you get a scholarship from ALD and we do give out lots of scholarships. And uh, the other thing is that ALD does a lot of uh, really interesting programming like uh, volunteer opportunities and professional development uh, seminars. And uh, all of that stuff is uh, not going to be charged to you for anything that's just covered by your uh, membership fee. So I think it's a good deal for the money. Yeah, and just at its core, you know, every honor society has a fee, I can tell you that. Um, there's always a fee because, you know, but why? Well, first of all, we're all run by a national organization. So there's somebody's got to pay for that certificate and the pin and everything you get nationally, our leadership program, our career development stuff, our scholarship program, our conference. Like it, you know, it comes at a cost and we try and keep that fee as low as possible. And that's the $30. So for $30, you get this lifetime of stuff that is, I think, going to pay for itself. But that's why there's a fee, because it costs something to, to offer all of those services. Um, and as you may know, if you're involved in any other club on campus, you know that there's all kinds of money floating around and funds floating around with the other student organizations. There might be bake sales in the student union or some sort of fundraiser, or they got money from the student government. Um, you already paid into a student activity fee. You didn't have a choice in that. You all paid a student activity fee and all that money goes towards your other student clubs on campus. So they have expenses too. Derek, if you want to expand a little bit more on what the chapter 
So remember that the 30 covers everything nationally, and then anything above 30 is what goes to the campus chapter and they spend it on campus. So what, what might be examples of campus things you've spent your money on? Yeah, something that my chapter uses the uh, local fee money for is uh, to offer food at events, whether that's through university catering services or through um, paying a certain amount for uh, a group to go out and uh, get coffee together or a smoothie. Uh, and that'll be typically in conjunction with some of our events. Uh, yeah, that's what we use it for. Yeah, a lot of food. So you're going to also make back your fee and all the food you're going to get at events and uh, things like that. Derek, I don't know if you know you're disappearing, but that's okay. Um, you're you're freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the, uh, the motion sensors in the room I'm in uh, decided uh, okay. I was you not You just turned anymore. very ghost-like. Um, okay, so, I, you know, I, I guess I think that I don't want to belabor the fee thing. Just know that it's, it's a legitimate thing to charge something to get for, uh, to pay for what you get. And so that's your question for you, right? Is it worth it to you? Um, and uh, that's the question I think only you can answer, but we try and keep it reasonable. We're not out to gouge students. It, we're, we're a nonprofit charitable organization. All our philosophy is giving money back and resources back to the students. So we're not like some multimillion dollar company by any means. Um, and again, uh, you like just can't say this enough. No hidden fees, no reoccurring, no credit card charges a year later. Uh, which some of those other organizations do. Um, we're often confused for a fraternity and sorority because for obvious reasons, we have Greek letter names. So that's just the way it was 200 years ago when they founded fraternities, they also founded honor societies and they all got Greek letter names. So we're very much not a fraternity or sorority. Um, and I think the, one of the things about fraternities is if you know the Greek life world, you know that you do pick one and you join one and that's it. You're a member of uh, whatever that sorority is a fraternity for life. And you can't join others, you just pick one. But for honor societies and other types of service fraternities, things like that, you can join as many as you want. You don't have to just pick one. There are other honor organizations, particularly that will be in your major as you advance in college. Um, so if you're a psychology major, your campus might have Psychi. That's a great honor society for psychology majors. So look for those types of honor societies. But right now, uh, ALD is for the is is to recognize first year success. So this is one of many you can join. Um, Derek, anything on those two things, but also maybe segue into the aren't aren't we all just scams? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so ALD is not mutually exclusive. It's not going to prevent you from being in any other organization, or if you're interested in a fraternity or sorority, uh, being in ALD will not prevent you from doing that. Uh, There's sort of two separate worlds. And uh, yeah, th there are a lot of honor society in invitations. Uh, I've gotten a couple of them over the years that are either kind of obviously scams or they could go either way, but they don't really do much. Uh, and so that's certainly something to look out for, but ALD is uh, completely in the other direction, um, not at all a scam. And uh, I think you'll get a lot out of it if you join. Yeah, so just uh, do your homework. If you did, if you got three other invitations or one other or 10 others, um, just sort of look them up. Uh, Google them, hopefully if they have a website, just so know that there are a couple things, some red flags and things to look for. Um, if you're wondering about the legitimacy, uh, it, do they have an office anywhere? Or is it like a PO box somewhere? Or do they have an actual physical location? Because a PO box is, can be a little sketchy. It, it might mean it's just a business trying to just make money. Do they have actual chapters on a campus? Are they actively led by students and an advisor? Or again, are they just blanket inviting millions of students without any campus presence? So look for that. Um, do they have actual academic criteria? If you got invited, it might seem like they do because we know that you did uh, did well your first semester. But if you have friends that also got the same invitation and they got a, a 2.5 or 2.0 GPA, just know that these other organizations, they're just inviting 
anybody who they can find an email address for. Um, so, and is the fee really high? Is Are they going to charge your credit card? There's one in particular I can tell you uh, does charge, they don't tell you, and they charge your credit card every semester. Um, but they don't tell you that they do that. So um, just be careful and do your homework. Um, and uh, yeah, do you want to say a little bit about involvement? And even if you're not involved, how it might still benefit you there? Yeah, um, so uh, I do have ALD on my resume in two places, actually, um, because it's a great way to meet people. And if you have it on your resume, people who see your resume uh, might recognize ALD because we are a pretty large honor society with a national presence. Uh, and so if you're going to a job interview and the interviewer can see that on your resume, they might say, oh, yeah, I've heard of that before, or maybe even I was in that when I was in college. Yeah, so that's sort of the benefit of even if you don't get involved. So that's sort of the thing. Like, uh, I think I, you, everybody here can probably understand that um, it might look a little different on your resume if you're involved in it, right? If you have a leadership position, um, that's going to appear somewhere else on your resume and, and enhance it. But even just having it on under the category of honors and recognitions or something, it's it's at least something to have. Again, if you don't want to get involved, which you don't have to. Um, if you do transfer, a uh, couple things about transferring. Uh, your membership, remember, is for life. Uh, and it follows you wherever you go. Uh, so if you transfer to a school that has an ALD chapter, again, we're all over. Um, actually, 400 schools, but 300 more like 300 are active. Um, then we'll transfer your record if you want. Just let us know and we'll uh, let uh, the new chapter know, uh, the new advisor um, at your new place. Um, and you can be involved in that and if you want at your new school. But if you transfer to a school that does not have a chapter, we'd add you to our national chapter, which is just a, an umbrella group that um, for anyone who transferred out um, just again to help you stay connected. Make we can send announcements if you want. You can opt in or out of that. It's up to you. You could also help us start a chapter at your new school if you wanted. If we didn't have a chapter there, that would be cool leadership experience because we're always looking to expand. So that's um, the deal. If you do transfer, your membership follows you. Derek, you want to take this on? We just want to just real briefly as we wind down, um, just again, let's just focus on what are the benefits? What do you get for your money? Derek. Absolutely. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things that ALD does is what's called the LEAD Certified Program. Uh, and that teaches you leadership skills and you get a leadership certificate from it. That's really neat. Um, also, financial assistance is a huge benefit. Um, I said earlier that we give out a lot of scholarships, and that's certainly true. Uh, $211,000 uh, in scholarship money to fund undergraduate education. And uh, also, the individual chapters can offer local scholarships, and I believe very many of them do. Uh, the one yeah. time in certainly does, and uh, those are helpful as well for paying for college. And then the uh, perks program that ALD has, I think it's pretty unique and uh, it's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Uh, you have access to over 302,000 perks and discounts nationwide. Um, things like um, oil changes, just anything that you can imagine. Um, lots of discounts and uh, discounted rates on things because you're in ALD. Yeah, it's a lot, very food focused, a lot of restaurants. If you enter your zip code, it'll even show you what's um, close by pizza, wellness products, like a million things. Um, and the LEAD certificate program, by the way, is optional, opt-in. It comes with membership, but you you don't, you have to just let us know you want to do it. And it's self-paced. Um, and you could take the next three years to do it. There's no time limit. Any of those? Just Yeah, uh, so career preparation. Um, ALD can help you a lot as you're preparing for your career. A lot of chapters will do things like uh, professional development presentations. I believe mine had one just a couple of days ago that was about how to improve your resume and how to uh, seek out internships. So you can get prepared for a career in that way. Another really neat benefit is that if you're in ALD, uh, typically uh, most people, if they start working for the federal government, they'll come in as a GS-5. But just because you're in ALD, um, you'll automatically be a GS-7, which is two levels higher and 
uh, comes with um, additional pay. So that's a really neat benefit. ALD can also enhance your resume. Um, so just being a member is a great resume builder. And then also if you're in any leadership positions, um, leadership experience is super valuable on a resume. And uh, that's definitely something that you should put on there. Cool. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that one too. Um, just I'll, I'll cover some of these real quick is, uh, uh, you know, service is really big. Uh, all of our chapters engage in service projects. You can help guide that or um, offer suggestions if there's something you want to do. Um, but lots of community service projects. Again, we've talked about the lifetime mem membership uh, and then meeting other people that, that are also serious about their academics. Um, two big things that we offer for leadership development in addition to that certificate thing is we do have a summit. Um, it's online. The next one's April 23rd, uh, all online. And uh, any new student, any member is welcome to attend, sign up and attend that. Lots of uh, leadership development and a keynote speaker that's this year's keynote speaker is talking about resilience and overcoming obstacles to continue to do well despite obstacles. And then what's really cool is, and Derek went to last year's, he can talk about this, but we do offer an in-person conference every year. Not every student can come to it, but um, it's certainly an opportunity you can think about. Uh, and um, it's typically almost a free weekend for students. Like we subsidize a lot of it. Your chapter would pay for your flight. So this is a really cool opportunity. It's in a different city every year. It's always in October. This year it's Denver, Colorado. Last year it was Tampa, Florida, and Derek went to that. Anything you want to say about the leadership conference? Yeah, I learned a lot from it. Uh, I got to network with a lot of other ALD members, and I went with uh, another member of my exec board at my chapter. And uh, so we learned a lot and brought a lot the lessons back to our chapter. In full disclosure, our conference is typically for the students who do take on leadership roles. I will be honest about that. So um, if you're thinking, you know, I want to join, but I won't be involved, this might not be a thing um, you would go to. But that summit that I showed you earlier is absolutely open to everybody, no matter whether you're involved or not. Um, I think we've talked a, a bit about campus involvement, just um, lots of opportunities for things, social, service, academic, scholarship, leadership, all sorts of events and activities. Anything you want to say for that? Is that, is that it good in a nutshell? Or? Yeah, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> Those are our five pillars, by the way. So you'll see your chapters will do events and stuff related to it. continuing academic success, service, scholarships, how to get scholarships, uh, leadership development, and social, having fun, doing fun things. Um, I, I added this slide recently just because, it, just know that ALD is not just because it's recognizing first year success, doesn't mean it's just for your freshman year. That's just when you join. But you're welcome to and encouraged to, I mean, you're a member for life, but you, there will be things in the next three and a half years you can be part of or partake in. Um, uh, up to including graduation. Now, when you graduate from your university, um, you're um, probably going to want to wear an honor card, which would be cool. So honor cards are really popular. Um, and uh, so that's sort of the incentive to sort of stay connected to it. Um, and any student can purchase uh, an honor card. Um, really, really encourage you to check us out on social media. We're at National ALD. Uh, in particular, Instagram is really our strongest account. We're sort of not really doing too much on Facebook these days. We've given up Twitter um, or a little bit on LinkedIn. Uh, we do have a, a growing YouTube channel where we post a lot of our leadership um, workshops uh, are all on um, YouTube. Uh, but we do some cool things on Instagram, including like Why Join Wednesday and Study Tip Sunday and Mental Health Monday and all sorts of cool tips on Instagram. So hopefully you could follow us. Um, the final thing to say really is to, if you're, because there's so many different chapters here today, um, everybody's timeline is different. Your induction ceremonies are different dates. Your uh, um, deadlines to join are on different dates. Just sort of look at your invitations and in your email for all your appropriate dates. Um, there's a date by which you're encouraged to join so that a certificate can be printed and shipped to your chapter. 
so you get it at the ceremony kind of thing. So just look at all those timelines and deadlines um, for your chapter based on your emails that you're getting. And, you know, we've got, well, we're a little pet. We're a minute over. I was thinking we'd be half hour, but um, any questions that you could put them in chat, you can unmute, you could email ALD at National ALD. You can text that text line 